Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to have some fun paint pouring and we are not gonna go spend a lot of money on fancy paints or fancy pouring mediums or fancy silicones or anything. I bet you're gonna be able to do this with stuff you have around your house and you're probably gonna be able to use up some odds and ends that have been kicking around, uh, not serving any purpose. So um, let's uh, tip the camera down to my table. I'm gonna show you how to make your own acrylic paint pouring medium and how to use it. So um, I'm just gonna tip my camera down here so you can see what I have been working on. And I just did this on uh, Facebook Live for on the Lava Soap page because it was just kind of a fun project to do with them. And um, you can see that I've got really pretty little cells and I've got swirly marbly patterns and everything I did here was using very inexpensive supplies. And this is another version here. This one's still wet too. I did this one today. And again, we got really pretty um, interesting shapes and textures going on here. And um, this is all stuff anybody can do from home. So the first thing we need to do is make our pouring medium. And the pouring medium is what is going to make our paint flow. And that's really important with paint pouring you need your paint to move. So what you're going to need to do is just get a jar. I'm using an old mason jar and you're going to put in um, equal parts glue, just regular old white glue. And we happen to have it by the gallon because my kids were in a big slime making phase for a while. So I got a lot of glue to use up here. So that works out. And then equal part water. So we got 50% glue, 50% water, and I'm just using uh, Elmer's washable school glue. Give it a good shake. And this will keep um, for quite a while. I mean, as long as there's no bacteria in your water, it should keep indefinitely, really. And um, that's all you do to make your flow medium. So the reason why you want to go 50-50 is because you're going to mix that 50-50 with your paint, or about that much. And um, that will just ensure that you don't underbind your paint, because at the most, you're only putting 25% water in because you have the glue and and honestly um, PVA glue white glue is pretty much like acrylic paint without the pigment so I'm just gonna give that a squirt now these are just some like half used bottles of craft paint so you might just kind of want to wait until your bottles are getting low to do this project or um, you will need to pour some out and store it else ways but I'll show you two different ways to do the pour so you'll see that you could actually mix this up in cups if you didn't want to do it right in your bottles here and I just use like a craft dedicated turkey baster for this uh, you could use pipettes or you could use a spoon it doesn't really matter uh, the turkey baster just works out really well and you can pick those up at the dollar store and just keep reusing it for your craft stuff now um, this is a black top but any of these with a white top I just mark it with an X so I know that I have added um, medium to it. I'll do that right on the side of the bottle so I know, so I don't get confused with other paints. So I'm going to give this a good shake and then I'm just going to bring over my other paints that I have here and we are going to get our canvases that we're going to work on. I just took a uh, shallow box and I put a couple cans in there and I'm just putting on a couple 5x7 canvases. Um, you just basically want some room so that your paint can drip and not get all over the place and make a mess. Um, so I'm actually going to move one of these out of the way. The first thing I'm going to do is um, kind of the way I typically do a paint pour. I don't do tons of them. I mean this is just kind of a lark for me. I um, I thought it'd be kind of fun. I'm going to start off with my darkest color. You don't have to, but I like to just make sure I get contrasty colors. And I'm going to go in with a light color like this cream. I'm really using up the paint today. This goes through a lot of paint, so that's why I like using this really cheap stuff. This was like four for a dollar. Uh, bottles of paint on sale so it works really well and um, and that way you don't have to worry you can experiment and have fun and not worry about you know wasting a bunch of supplies and materials uh, I'm gonna do some dark blue and I think I'll do um, oh I'll try this color here that we just made this is kind of like a salmony earthy almost like a potter's pink color oh that's kind of pretty and let's do another contrasting color. I'll do a lighter blue. And we're not really mixing everything. We're going to just kind of let it swirl. So you can use some colors that are contrasted, like opposite colors without getting a lot of mud. 
and we'll do that gold and this will work with a Martha Stewart the more expensive paint it'll work with a really cheap craft paint it really doesn't matter so I'm just gonna start by letting it swirl And then before I get too carried away, I'm going to spray it with a little bit of, um, you don't have to do this, but if you have a little, like a spray paint, that can be kind of fun because it's a different media. This is an, like a spray, an oil-based spray paint, so it's going to want to um, uh, react with the acrylic. And it will break apart and you'll get the little cells there. And we do this over a box because we are going to be making quite a mess. Now I have a lot of that gold on top and that didn't happen to be the last time I did this, but I think it's because this is a smaller canvas. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of cardstock and kind of swoosh down to some of those other layers. So they can have their chance to, uh, to be shown off. You just don't want to over mix it, but you do want to make sure that all those colors can be seen. can start to see some of them pull apart from each other there. Now something neat about the spray paint is that if you have some alcohol in like a little dropper bottle, you can um, drop some on and get a really cool, um, almost like, like a breaking apart of that film and that shows you what you have underneath. That's kind of a neat effect. And I like to have the metallics on top just because it it really kind of um, kind of shows up really well. But you can go in and um, if you notice, well, I wish I had a little more of this color there. You can go in and add that. You can do as little or as much as you want in your pour. I think so anyway. I mean, I'm not a you know I'm not an expert. This is just kind of a fun way for me to use up some paint. I'm sure there are paint pouring purists out there that would just be disgusted with what I'm doing, but I'm having fun. I'm enjoying myself. Now, if you're working on a stretch canvas, you have that nice thickness on the edge where, where it dribbles over, and sometimes you will need to guide that a little bit. If you find that it's not like spreading in an area, you can just kind of use your fingers or your piece of cardstock to help it flow. And another thing I really like to do, because I think this really makes it have that quintessential paint pouring look, is to blast it with some hairspray. Um, now I'm doing this in lieu of putting silicone in my paints because it um, it gives me a very similar effect. Now some hairsprays, the more expensive ones, will have silicones in them. And um, it, it's what kind of protects your hair from heat damage and whatnot and keeps it nice and soft. Um, but this is just cheap old Aquanet, and I the reason I use the cheap stuff is because it doesn't have silicone in it, and I know I can use it on my, um, um, like on my in my sketchbook, and it's not going to you know leave oily marks or anything. But um, but this still works. It must be the alcohol in there that helps get the uh, get those like cells. If you look in the corner there, you can see some really neat cells happening. It does take a little bit of time for the uh, for the cells to happen, so we got to be a little patient. Once the um, the spray paint dries, you won't be able to use the alcohol on the spray paint to get anything. And, this, and the, the alcohol on its own doesn't really seem to affect the acrylic paint film, but the hairspray does. There's something in the hairspray that gives you that really neat, those really neat cells. And you could be like really... Um, uh, you know, really smart, put like some papers down underneath and actually, you know, get like some use out of the drips. But you can see there, we're getting some really neat, hopefully there's not too much glare, but you can see the almost like stone-like quality that we're getting there. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside over to the edge as much as possible. 
I've already got to clean off my table, so I'm not worried about that too much right now. And I'm going to show you another way you can do this. And um, I don't know what I have left for paint here because I've been going through it like crazy because you go through tons of paint with this project. So that's another reason um, I want to use the less expensive stuff. And I just want to zoom in a little bit. Um, and I'm going to start, I'm just going to use some of these colors that I know I have plenty of. And I'm going to start by putting some of this like kind of raspberry color in there. And then I'm going to do some yellow. This is what you call a dirty pour. And you just squirt all your colors into the, um, into a cup, basically. And this is a recycled Pringles cup. Um, if you ever buy like the single serving, I just got that on my sweater. Don't wear a nice sweater because you're going to get paint on it. Um, if you ever get like those single serve um, Pringles, like at Sam's Club or whatever, they come in these little cups and it just seems so wasteful to throw them away, but it's really nice knowing there's only 100 calories like in a little cup. Anyway, I got them on vacation for the kids for vacation last year and I'm like, you know what, let's wash these cups because it's going to be perfect for doing stuff like this, you know, when you just need to have a little a little, you know, cup to mix in or, you know, you just need a little cup for water. So this is great. I'm going to use up all these dregs. I kind of, before I decluttered and con would everything, I, I like would just go nuts. And I went to AC Moore once and they had this, all of the My Studio paints four for a dollar. Plus I have a teacher's discount there. So it was like four for 85 cents and I just couldn't resist. And I bought so many. And then I'm like, what am I, I hardly ever use acrylics. Why did I do that? Um, so for this, what I'm going to do is actually put the canvas on top and I'm going to flip it. And I've actually never done this before. Um, and I'm going to lift up. Ooh, that's pretty. Look at that. That's pretty. Ooh, that's neat. Look at that. That's cool. A lot of paint. I probably could have had a bigger canvas. The thing is that you need enough paint that it will cover without you fussing with it too much. That's neat. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these paintings. I should, ever, I should, I should mail them to viewers. Anybody, nobody would want them. I, <laughs> anybody want these? I think it would be cool. I, a lot of times I'll scoop up some of the paint from the box underneath and like to do the edges if I had a canvas or something. I almost think this would be really cool to like redo your countertops. Wouldn't that be a cool effect? Oh, I really like that. That's neat. Let's do it. Let's see what the gold looks like on there. Gold spray paint that is. I probably should have sprayed that on a little bit sooner because now it's already moved. Everything's already moved and slid. It can slide some more. I just don't want to over mix it. Oh, it's neat. It's kind of like doing the alcohol ink because it, um, you know, it's always just changing and moving. I'm just going to hit it with some alcohol to help. Oh, that looks totally awesome. Look at that. Cause I did a light coating of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, gold spray paint. That looks really cool. Doesn't that look neat? I think it looks really awesome. And then I'm going to zap this for this. Hairspray, because I really love the hairspray effect. And oh, you know, look what I did. I dripped some onto this canvas. Huh, happy accident. Well, I don't know if it's happy or not, but it's an accident. <laughs> accident! I'm an accident. I'm an accident in the craft room waiting to happen. We'll just try to feather that in there. We'll blend it in. I've got paint bottles going everywhere. I could spray a little, uh, just do a little gold spray paint on there. Because you can cover it right up. Oh, look at that. I did the gold spray paint over the hairspray and then just automatically just broke up and, and slid around. That's kind of cool. Look at that. That's what, like, in the, if you look at that corner there, that's kind of a neat. It's kind of like just, I don't know if you can see it with the glare, but uh, just kind of feathered out. Just a neat, neat effect. Maybe a little alcohol. I hope these chemicals are all right to. Oh, that just made everything break apart really boldly. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of cool looking. Oh, and with the hairspray, it really um, helped that the hair, the um, uh, spray paint layer stay more active so you could go back in with the alcohol and do more to it. 
but um, but there you have it. I'll show you another example. This example I did um, a couple weeks ago, so it had plenty of time to dry. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Uh, wrong way. Um, so I got the, this is when I was just kind of figuring out what will work, what won't, and I decided I would use some linseed oil because I thought, well, linseed oil, that's definitely going to um, resist acrylic paint, and it did, but um, what it did, it ended up keeping the paint from adhering in some spots so I could actually, f like, peel off the, uh, like flick off the paint where the linseed oil had been it acted more of a resist rather than just making cells which it did make uh cool cells but um but it actually weakened the bond of the paint so i didn't i don't recommend mixing an oil right in with your paint or even flicking oil on because of that effect but the hairspray doesn't seem to affect the bonding and the spray paint seems to bond fine um so and i just really like what you get with a hairspray you get these subtle like breaking apart cells it just is a really nice fluid almost looks underwater effect um so the, these craft paints are going to dry matte uh, meaning they're not going to have very much of a gloss to them hello again um so i recommend that you coat them with either a brush on acrylic once they're completely dry and this will take a few days for them to completely dry because you have such a thick layer of paint um brush on some gloss i think the gloss just looks really sharp uh you could do matte but I I really love the look of the gloss on these. Do the edges too if you're working on a canvas. It's really going to look fantastic, kind of modern, and almost like stone. It's just, or like geodes. It's just a really interesting, unique um, type of look. I think that they would make really awesome coasters too. Uh, the one that I did on the Masonite, which is this one right here, I might chop that up and make little coasters with it. I can't really tip it too much because it's still wet, but um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of fun things you could try with that. Um, this one's really coming coming to life here. I'm really getting so I'm trying not to get the uh, get the lights, but that one's really got some interesting stuff happening. I think the metallic really makes it. Um, and you could definitely do like a faux stone if you kept all the colors um, natural. Like if you're doing amethyst and you did like different shades of purple, maybe a little bit of silver um, or pearl white, and uh, you know kept that and maybe some like browns and like slate gray i think you could get some really interesting looks that way um because you're gonna have a very fantastic fanciful look if you stuck to more realistic colors you could really um almost fool somebody with with some of these patterns i think especially like if you did like an end table with this i, I just think it's a i think it's fun now you are going through a lot of paint so i recommend using the cheap stuff i think these were like Last time I looked, they were three for a dollar on sale at AC Moore, but probably whatever big box craft store you have has like a generic kind of store brand that you can get pretty inexpensively um, or use up the tail ends of the paints that you have. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Okay, I've rambled enough about paint pouring, I guess. Um, I just wanted to bring this to you while I had all my supplies out. I know not everybody's on Facebook, so I wanted to make sure I had this for YouTube as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.